Watch your lads, welcome to Oak Swamp and part 28 of the Austin 10 special wrap. Firstly this week I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers. Watch your lads, welcome aboard. Secondly, everyone who left a comment and like last week. Thanks a lot, keep them coming, you know I love them. So this week I'm going to be heading into the grill show again. I'm going to be heading into dash territory and I end up finishing off the old clutch. So stay tuned, let's have it. Okay, so my exactly right was nowhere near right at all, to be honest. So what I want to do is cut this off and spin it round that way. And then I can use a little 90 degree there. But obviously I can't tick, but Dazzle can. Yes, so... So Dazzle's going to do that for me. Have a bit of fun doing this monkey mill. Yeah. <laughs> Secret recipe, yeah. And every summer, tiny boys drive out to the sticks to have a smoke and a beer and to get their kicks. And they bring along their girlies, they're so fine and dandy. And that's when Grandpa's bear trap comes in really handy. So come on, pretty baby, take a trip with me. Treat you to some KFT 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 Come on now baby You can get it for me Don't worry about the smell And don't you worry about the blood Just remember that it tastes so fucking finger licking good I'm going a little bit of green left over from the hook. There it is, and it looks really cool. I mean, that looks the proper part. And the beauty is, I've slept on that, and I've done other stuff on that grill shell before. <laughs> Not that's any advantage to a grill shell, but <laughs> that looks the bollocks, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks the bollocks. Right, so what Dazzle did, I bought this capillary temperature gauge because it kind of looks like the oil clock that I'm going to be using. Trouble is, the thread's the same, but the sender's too long. So what Dazzle's done, he's made this. So now that go into there. That'll go into there. <laughs> like so. And that'll wind all the way down there. And then this will wind in there. And you can see, he's poking through the hole there. Which means I now have a temperature clock. Right, so this this is the, f the thermostat housing, and it went like that, as you probably remember. And what Dazzle's done is cut him off and welded him back. What did you take him there? Yeah, I take him. Was it a git? Yeah. That makes your hose easy because. The outlet's here, that means I just have a straight 90, a straight 90. <laughs> straight 90, eh? <laughs> just one 90 going between there and there. This one's a bit more complicated, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Nice one, brush. Right, this radiator, after much looking at it, I started polishing it and with the idea of it looking old, but to be honest, I'm gonna paint it black. It'll look older straight away, so I'm gonna give it a lashing of etch primer. Lash it right off. Any dirty okay, so I've bought an oil hose and Dazzle's finished that. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clocks in this dash and it's purely so I can keep an eye on the engine and see exactly what he's doing with oil pressure and temperature. Plus I want to do it anyway. 
So what I'm going to do is take it up, put it on the bench, mark it up, and get them clocks in it. Okay. So there it is. The clocks I'm using for this is going to be this original Austin one. He's still in pretty good nick. Then I'm going to use this old oil clock, and I'm going to use that temperature gauge what I had in there. And I'm thinking about putting them out of there. What I'm going to do first is position this one, get that right, and then take it from there. you to some KFT. 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 Come on. Right, there's the sort of idea. I'm going to curve this with the clock, but I'll, obviously I'll draw that in once the clock's in there. That one there is going to be an emission light. Right, that's a 76 mil, and it's going to be a bit small, but that's the biggest one we got here, I think. So I'm going to bung him in, and we'll have to hit it with the die grinder, I think. That it tastes so fucking finger licking good. Oh, that's the first one. Okay, that's what we're looking at. I think that looks alright. Alright, save so stabbing myself on the arm or the leg. I'm going to chop this nasty little point off. Secret recipe book. So come on, pretty baby, take a trip with me. I'm gonna take you for a ride in the country. Your eyes won't believe what you are gonna see. I'm gonna treat you to some KFT. Okay, I flattened it down with a bit of 500 and I think that's about it really. I'm going to stick the clocks in and see how they look and then I'll chuck it back in and we can see how cool it looks. Right, so on to the tip jar. You guys were really, really generous again last week. It's much appreciated, thank you. And the names are as follows. Brian Colchin, Kevin Walker, Matthew Mercy, for the third week in a row, tent and canvas repair. Cheers, guys. Paul Beckwith and Garrick Royal, who I forgot last week and the week before. Cheers, guys. Really appreciated. So all the names are gone onto the wardrobe, ready for when I make a suitable item for you to win. Anyway, if you want to be part of the channel and make a donation, please go over to my homepage, bottom right hand corner above subscribe, you'll see tip jar. That'll take you over to PayPal. And if you can afford it, bung me a couple of quid. It all helps me out here and it helps me keep this channel going. Cheers if you do that. Let's get on with it.
Okay, so I'm not going to use the mechanical fuel pump on here, so I'm going to make a blanking plate for it. Silence pervades the space that you create. Like in the flesh, I crave your mind. Now I'm a standing on the axe man's edge. And guilty of nothing, I broke our heart. Alexander Graham Bell, you bastard. I'm talking to her is the sweetest suicide. Yeah. Silence gathers like a blanket in this shadowed land And time falls on life, fingers to sand Time to see if this tank is sound. I'm gonna fit these in properly, put a bit of tube in, put the pet cock in, and then I'm gonna put a bit of pet rice. We ran away from the past now, one is too few. And Alexander Graham Bell, you bastard. I'm talking to her is the sweetest suicide. Yeah. Well, there you go. Not a drip out of there. And there was definitely a little pinhole in there. Well, I'll give Greg a call. Well, nice one, Greg. That seems to have done the trick. And thanks to Alan at Furtown as well. No problems. While I was here, I brought you a little prezi. All right. Mm. Little experiment for you. This is Furtan's conservation wax. Right. And you usually use it for preserving super shiny chrome surfaces and stuff. Right. Cars. But You're not going to find thought, any of that here. No, but I thought it might just be nice to hold your rust patina exactly as it is. Spray it on and leave it alone. Here's a leaf spring we prepared earlier. Yeah, right, so we 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 covered this whole side, and then I'm going to leave this out. Right, so we give that a go, and uh, we'll give that a water test later. But it might be useful for keeping the patina on your well rusty hot rod or rat rod, or keeping a chrome on your super shiny <laughs> rod. <laughs> right now, Greg's been kind enough to sort of bring these products round to me, and I'm kind of trying them out. But if you want to try them out. You can get 10% discount. Go to the website down in the link below. Mention Oaks Want Rats, all one word, lowercase, and they give you a 10% discount on all their range. Now, if you want to wait for me to try them out, then do that, but it's worth, worth a look. Go over there and see what they got. But thanks a lot, Greg. That's all right. Not nice at all. one, man. Right, so the next job is to continue on with this clutch. So this pedal came off the old Austin 10 I dug up. We want it to bend that way. Alexander Graham Bell, you bastard. Talking to her is the sweetest suicide, yeah. Got to bend this round a bit, so I need to get that one done. Do you me? 
Fred's still right, and that has been buried probably for 50, 60 years. Did I ever tell you the story about me digging the chassis up? So we were up the woods having a bit of an explore, and I see this bit of a front axle upside down poking out of the ground. First of all, I thought it was just an axle. This is what happened. So I was walking in the woods the other day and I found this. So me and the lads are uh, nipping back up there to go and dig it up and hopefully it'll be good. So here we are at the wood. Baron pushing. <laughs> Here she is. So it's got a very narrow track and quite big thin drums. We'll see when we get her out. Well, I met a girl from Oakland, Turkey. She was happy and full of tea. Mommy, let your bags hang down. <laughs> well, we dug a bit further and it looks as though we've possibly got the chassis rails on there. So we're going to keep going, uncover it and try and get her out. I'm a bit worried though because it's a bit wearing that track right end. Cot. 09. Something 09. That's her name? Cool. That's really good. That's We've also found the front bumper, which is, it looks in good nick. Shiny. It's got, it's got the uh, cranking handle thing there. That's going to identify it. <laughs> and if anyone recognises that, it's a bit of monkey metal, chromed. Look, that's how narrow the car is. Okay, they're digging. Look how funny little toys. There's another hint of the steering box is right at the front there. It's got cable brakes. Must be early 30s or 20s. Or in its 20s, it's so bloody narrow. <laughs> Dig on. So we've established the chassis comes back to here and then it bends. So we're going to try and snap the chassis off there and keep the whole front end of the chassis. We got the number, I'll have her on the road by the end of next year. Look, there's a brake pedal. So we're not just cut her, we're worrying it. She's going, Mush. She's going. The boy went to the van for reinforcements. So we went home and had a cup of tea because it was getting a bit tricky and we've gone home and got a block and tack on some strops and hopefully now it should be an easy pull. We've got to get it out of here yet. She's still waiting. How you doing? We're going to strap to that tree and pull it out. There she is, she's out. It's the wind wouldn't fuck about, didn't no. it? No way. <laughs> That's the bin number. There she is out, and it's tiny, but very heavy. We're going to take the barrow back, and then come back with an empty barrow, and see if we can't wheel it all over this obstacle course. <laughs> Beautiful. 
Well, here she is, Austin 8. But it's got the writing on it, see? Yeah. Right, it's much later. And it's all buried here. Now, we're going to take it over and put it where it's supposed to be. Under there? Oh yeah, slow worm, There was another one. Oh, look at that. You don't see slow worms every day. Hello, mate. Oh yeah, so this is an Austin 8 engine. Not the crazy Steve. We're digging them out again. We got a bit of a walk up here. Come on. Oh yeah. Like straight in the fucking. Come back right in. Even if I had wheel nuts, it's it's so rotten. Oh that's starting to look what I'm thinking about. Now we gotta try and get the engine in. <laughs> there she is. We dug it up only to bury it to make it look as though it's actually been buried here. All of that work, lads, was just for that. Do you think it was a waste of time? Well, there you go. That's what it looks like. And this is just as a bit of art. What I'm going to do is plant this out. I want this just to be tucking its nose out. I'm going to take them wing supports off. I've got a few more bits to get for it. I've got to get a grill shell and I. I'm going to put some more dirt over it so it's a bit more covered. And that'll be it. It'll look cool as hell. Anyway, let's get back on with the Austin. Right, but this clutch linkage, I got it to a point and then said that I would catch up once the clutch is actually in. But the clutch is in now. And I've got to catch up. First thing we have to do is drill all in there, which is going to be harder than it looks. Right, there you go. You can see that's going to go into that pin and push this forward. So now what I've got to do is put this other bracket on and try her out. I said, hi, Mr. Gator, how do you do? And he took one snap and he bit off my shoe. Right, that's the idea. you got a little bit of adjustment there. But your clutch. One step forward and two steps back. I got on that train, but she ran out of track. Right, so I've got some of these nylon bushes which I'm going to open out a bit as spaces. I jumped in the river to swim the other side When I saw the alligator with his big old evil eyes I turned his head and with a big grin He opened up wide and said, come on in One step forward and two steps back We got on that train, but she ran out of track Right, I'm going to tidy all these welds up, make it look as though it grew there. should do it by the time that's rusted. Okay, well that's the clutch done. And it works really, really well. It's pretty light. This has got a short arm with a knuckle there. We've got an adjustment here. Now this adjustment takes all the free play. Look, if we undo it, look. You can wind the free play out of it. Up to about there somewhere. And there's your clutch. It feels kind of like a hydraulic clutch, you know, it doesn't feel soft, but it doesn't feel hard, if you know what I mean. But the brake could be there, that'd be there, and I've got to squeeze the floor over it, and that should be it. Another job out of the way. Next thing I've got to do is finish off cutting all of 
these bits out here and I want to I'm going to drill these just to take a bit of weight off, not that it's going to be much, but it, it will look cool looking through here, looking through another set of holes. So I've just popped up to see a mate and I haven't seen him for years and he only lives just up the road and his name's Mark. Hello. And he has this. What is it, Mark? A 41 Willis Coop. <laughs> <laughs> now I know you can't see too much of this but the thing you want to look at is this so what, what what's going on in here then Mark that is or was a 460 Ford um, we've had it punched out to 545 uh, with a stroker kit it's got quite a large nitrous system on it we're looking at about a thousand brake on the road that's the plan. And this is a road legal car? It will be, yep. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> going to be a bit of road, a bit of track, and a lot of fun, hopefully. Because it's taken way too long. There's nearly 15 years there. 15 years? 15 years, Blimey, yeah. and how many pounds? Do you want me to say? Yeah. That's approaching £50,000 now. Have you drove it yet? No, no, never driven it, no. Um, this is the first time... We fired it, which was last year. We've had a few issues. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. It's nuts. Can we go inside? Yes, definitely. Right, the light's a bit weird in here, but this is just a prelim to a bit later, because I'm going to give you an update on this as this goes. So tell us about the insides here, Mark. That's all retractable, so that comes off. Basically, what you see is to keep an eye on what's going on. Um, obviously, shift light, memory rich, uh, rev counter, this is the important bit. Um, that's more race car than anything else. Is this the shoe up the top? Yes, yeah, that's all live. And obviously the safety net for the window. That's just, all. so we've got trans brake and launch control. So what's between you and the road? <sighs> that's the annoying bit. She's running, brakes are okay. We've checked them. It's just, you don't believe it. Doors, boot latch and that's about it, we are ready. So you could say a couple of weeks work. This took me six months just to get back out here. Well, I'm gonna kick your ass you now because to. I want some video of you. I wanna go out on this thing, man. This is insane. Yes. But thanks for showing us around, mate. It's no bang on. I'm gonna jump out now. So when are you gonna pull it outside next so we can have a good look at it? Week after next, she's coming down on the ground and going out. And then we're gonna fire her up. I'm gonna come round, eh? Definitely, yeah. I definitely want to see this thing fire up. Let's fire up. And you're going to run it open-headed on the day, eh? Yes. Look at this lovely bit of work on these stainless headers. I, I reckon I built the whole of my car for the price of that header. <laughs> and some. But there you go. There's, there's the Willis. Nice one, Mark. Thanks for showing us around. No worries. And uh, hopefully we'll be coming back to see that start, you're thinking. Watch this space. Definitely. Well, how cool was that? I'm really excited to see that fire up in the next couple of weeks. But that's about it for this week, lads, I'm afraid. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a comment and a like. That'd be well appreciated. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do. If you can afford it, go to the tip jar and bung me a couple of quid, and I'll catch you dudes next time. Hang loose. And it's where my love is at. That's where my luck is at That's where my luck is at <laughs> hey, Here we go Well I give up Greg Fucking Alan, fucking Alan. <laughs> you said Alan, Greg. Alan. Greg, 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 Greg. I give Sinbad. No. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go.